So here we have different types of narcissists, okay? Like we have um, the overt and grandiose. Let's start with that guy, okay, or girl. Uh, AKA classic, ag agentic, I don't know what that means, or extroverted. Uh, I know what that means. So they're like very charming, exploitative, and controlling. Has an inflated ego and expects special treatments. Grandiose. This is also known as the classic. Yes. And we, we all met somebody like that, right? This is also known as the classic or stereotypical narcissist and what many think of when they use this term, right? We all think about, oh, yes, I am fantastic. I am awesome. Uh, yeah, we all think that when we hear a narcissist. These individuals are typically described as arrogant, entitled, charming. Oh, so charming, honey. Grandiose, superficial, and vain. They will often be very talkative, but it is about themselves. When you attempt to talk, <laughs> they may seem uninterested and act busy. Oh my God, yes. Malignant. He, he or she is the most severe type associated with antisocial traits, hostile, aggressive, paranoid, and sadistic. Well, aren't they delightful? According to Dr. Duvarsula, this is the most toxic and aversive type of narcissist. Oh, yes. This form takes the grandiose narcissist and adds a more exploitative, antagonistic, Machiavellian and at times seemingly psychopathic overlay. Yes, malignant narcissists drive people to the edge and leave them feeling betrayed, fearful, manipulated, tricked, and devastated. So the malignant narcissist is often referred to as the dark triad. Ooh, you guys, this is serious. Psychopathy, dang. Machiavellism, or whatever, however you pronounce that. My Latino tongue can't say it correctly. Uh, and narcissism, leaving a relationship with a malignant narcissist can be very difficult due to fear of the narcissist and what they may do. Yes, a hundred percent. I highly recommend it if you had an experience and are healing from narcissistic abuse to take on martial arts, uh, specifically Krav Maga, because Krav Maga is an Israeli martial art that is about uh, street fighting. So it's very to the point. It's like defense and offense. So they don't play. I'm telling you, Krav Maga, when they teach you, they're not playing. And they also teach you how to take pew pews from people and other stuff. Okay. If you get what I'm saying, because I can't say these things on um, YouTube. So I'm streaming all over. So I'm streaming on YouTube. I can't say it. But, um, but yeah, so it made me feel, it empowered me very much because I knew that even if this person tried to attack me physically, I was very ready. I knew what to do. I felt empowered and confident that I could take care of myself. Here, somatic. Oh, this is funny. Obsessed with their body, weight, and physical appearance. Hmm, to a certain extent, we're not obsessed with our appearance and body and weight, but we've been kind of trained and programmed to kind of um, kind of take, you know, look after that, right? Kind of like take care of ourselves. But I guess there's a kind of like a line between taking care of yourself and being a somatic narcissist. So they believe that they're prettier, stronger, or fitter than others. I'm sorry, this is so funny. Ooh, the seductive narcissist. What is up? Okay, you guys. Shower targets with compliments and flattery for admiration will drop people if not braced enough covert and vulnerable okay so aka closet introverted or hypersensitive insecure withdrawn and avoidant low self esteem and defensive often plays the victim yes and again all these types of narcissists, they cross over because my overt grandiose narcissistic ex was also a vulnerable one because he did play the victim a lot, right? They do that. They play the victim and they abuse you and then they play the victim, which is so annoying.